มาทูสัตตังพระโตเพียพระทวดาวิทยายาทันนาเชพระเทวดบาทีสวากันธาบารนังยตาอาตมา the self too verily สัตตังทุกวันพระอภิธา the reality that is always present a p i yet a p r a p t a v a t is not realized a v i d y a y a because of ignorance t a n n a s h e upon its destruction p r a p t a v a t like a newly gained object b a t i appears s v a k a n t a b h a r a n a n g the ornament of one's neck yata just as Atman is the ever-present reality, yet it is not realized because of ignorance. Atman is realized on the destruction of ignorance, just as a missing ornament on one's neck is found when it is pointed out. Namaste. So, just like Brahman is present everywhere. Omnipresent, Brahman, the self, Atman; <clears throat> these are all synonyms for the same thing, which is the ground of being, that ocean or reservoir of existence, consciousness, and bliss that actually is everything. I saw this back in 1984, <laughs> and this was a blessing, a great blessing. That led to so many other things, but primarily it was the total validation of the knowledge given in the scriptures. Why don't we perceive Brahma? Well, why don't we perceive the air, you know, or space? Even better, we don't perceive space because of ignorance. But then, when we go to school and we get taught three-dimensional geometry, solid geometry, oh, we start to think about space, and then space becomes a medium. It becomes a platform. It becomes a ground, huh? a place for things to exist. But the existence itself is not due to space. It's due to Brahman. The self expands itself, as all senses and the mind and the sense objects, because without consciousness at the root, none of this would exist or matter. <laughs> matter, such a funny word. Huh? If it ain't matter, it don't matter. <laughs> Well, yes, it does, because without this non-material reality, the manifestation couldn't exist. The world would be a zero, imperceptible, just like Brahman. So, just like the breeze makes the air perceptible, and just like Study of solid geometry and doing modeling and stuff brings awareness of space. So, in the same way, the study of consciousness results in awareness of Brahman, and Brahman is cognized indirectly through its resemblance to subtle things such as space, the intellect, intelligence, and consciousness. Also, bliss. Bliss is also intangible, isn't it? It's not. You can't go into a store and and get a pound of bliss. You know, <laughs> it's immeasurable. It's only subjective. When you're happy, you're happy. Huh? When you're not, you're not. <laughs> That's most people's experience. But one who has realized Brahman. 
is no longer dependent on the periodic oscillations of matter in the medium of space. He is only dependent on Brahman, the self, Atman, the existence, consciousness, bliss that is at the root of everything. Most of us have forgotten it. I mean, it happens to me exactly like I'll wake up, you know, typically in the middle of the night and I'll feel my neck to see, well, where is my Rudraksha bead? This is very special. This was given to me by a seer lady in Tiruvannamalai, India. And, you know, according to tradition, Rudraksha beads should never be sold, only given. So it was very special to me. And I've kept it with me all these years. But sometimes I'll wake up, you know, and sleep, and it's behind my neck or something, and I'll, I'll test and try to find it. It's not there. Oh, God, where did I put it? <laughs> where did it go? Oh, yeah, it's behind here. Okay, now it's back. The same is true of Brahman. Although Brahman is ever-present, we forget about it. Huh? Just like the other day, I forgot where I put my scissors. I have a big pair of kitchen shears, you know? And I was doing a project in some other part of the house and left it there and forgot about it. So when I come back in the kitchen, want to use my shears. Ah, where are they? They're not in their place. So I had to search the whole house to find it. Similarly, if you have lost Brahman, you have lost the nectar, the rest, the recharge port, you know, that makes life livable. I think this is why so many people are committing suicide or want to commit suicide. Life has become tasteless. Why? No connection with Brahman. And the more one is disconnected from that source of everything, the more one even denies its existence, the more miserable life is, you know, <laughs> it's horrible. Life is so horrible, for example, you know, for these people involved in wars now, that the only fun they can have is attacking others. That's nuts, I think. That's like psychosis, I think. Because every being is entitled to its existence. Its existence comes about through its karma, the results of its previous activities and previous unremembered existences. And those are carried from life to life by the subtle body, antaryami. So this lingam, this subtle form, moves from body to body, and we forget the previous body, although the results of the experiences in that body are present within us in the form of tastes. Everybody has a certain taste in food, in sex, in aromas, in shapes and forms, and so many things, huh? music, whatever. Where did these tastes come from? They seem axiomatic, <laughs> without origin, but compelling. So these come from the previous life whose compressed impressions are carried to the next life in the subtle body. This is all explained in Brahma Sutra, in the fourth chapter, end of the third chapter, and in the fourth chapter. So, you know, we may never get there at the pace we're going in the series, but that's all right. You have access to the original text, and you can read it for yourself. You know, do your homework. Study the scriptures. Because the more background you have in uh, Vedic scriptures, the more sense it will make to you when you hear stuff like this. Huh? That Brahman or Atman, the self, has simply been forgotten. 
misplaced, as it were, taken for granted, as it were, uh, taken, assumed to be there every time we need it, which is every act of awareness, consciousness, perception, taste, and so on. Every thought, every word, every action. <laughs> Without Brahma, none of that would be possible. And yet we forget Brahma. Just the way we forget, I forget, you know, when I'm not thinking about it, that I'm wearing this ornament. This is the example, and there are, you know, hundreds of examples like this throughout the Vedic and Upanishadic texts that demonstrate the truth of Brahman in the form of some example. And this is an instance of superimposition. The Vedas and Upanishads superimpose some image or metaphor on Brahman. And vice versa. They superimpose Brahman on the metaphoric image so that one can contemplate Brahman. Otherwise, Brahman is not an object of meditation. It never becomes an object of anything, including any process of perception. Why? Because Brahman, Atman, the self, is the perceiver. Duh. <laughs> it's the subject. It's never the object. Always the subject. <clears throat> because we can't perceive it. Even if we go into ourselves, even if we go into others, and examine them minutely, we can never find the self. Because the self is the same in all living entities. It just gets covered by different upadis, different limiting adjuncts that make it appear to be one thing or another. But these are all maya. Huh? And when we, you know, uncover the, take, take off the upadi, and uncover the, the naked self within, <laughs> then we become aware of it. And that's all we have to do is, you know, point our intelligence toward Brahman by means of any one of these similes, any one of these forms of meditation. Vedanta Sutra says they're all valid. So whether you're praying to Jesus or Allah, or Yeshua, or Yahweh, or Krishna, or Rama, or Nishringha, or, you know, any form of God. It doesn't matter. All those prayers are good. And whether you're trying to reach Brahman, or the emptiness, Nibbana, <laughs> or the Tao, doesn't matter. As long as your intelligence is pointed towards it, you'll eventually achieve it through whatever means you adopt. This is the deepest truth of Vedanta. And this is what we're trying to get across to people, that consciousness, if you look into consciousness, if you contemplate consciousness, if you observe it in an unbiased way or even uh, sometimes use the classification of the Vedas, Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya, then you will see in the changes of consciousness every day during the day that Brahman is always present. Brahman is the self. Brahman is you. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.